سَمَّرْجِعِ الْبَصَرَ Then return your vision. Meaning look again. How many times? كَرَّتَيْنِ Twice. Again and again. كَرَّتَيْنِ is a dual of كَرَّة. And كَرَّة means to return, to come back. And كَرَّتَيْنِ to come back again and again, repeatedly. So ثُمَّ رْجِعِ الْبَصَرَ كَرَّتَيْنِ Then return your vision up to the sky twice or again and again. مَرَّ بَعْدَ مَرَّ And look for some kind of fault. But يَنْقَلِبْ إِلَيْكَ الْبَصَرُ Your vision will return to you. خَاسِئًا Humiliated وَهُوَ حَسِيد While it is exhausted, fatigued. خَاسِئ is from the root letters خَاسِين Hamza. And khasi is that which has been chased away. It gives the meaning of makhsu, that which has been chased away, that which has been made weak, that which has been rejected, driven away. We have learned earlier, قال اخسأوا فيها ولا تكلمون. اخسأوا فيها, meaning be repelled, be driven away. You are rejected, you're not allowed to be here. And khasi over here is used for the tiring of the eyes. The tiring of the eyes. Why? Because when the eyes are looking for something, when a person is looking for something, and he does not find anything, do the eyes become tired? It is as though they have been rejected. You're looking, but you cannot see. You're searching, but you cannot find. So unachieved, unsuccessful, disgraced, humiliated. ثُمَّ رْجِعِ الْبَصَرَ كَرَّتَيْنِ يَنْقَلِبْ إِلَيْكَ الْبَصَرُ خَاسِئًا Defeated, humbled, wa huwa hasir. Hasir is from the root letters hasin ra. And husur is to be tired, to be exhausted, to be fatigued. It's the next level of fatigue after ay. Walam ya'ya. And he did not get tired after creating the creation. So ay is a level and after that is husur. To be exhausted to the point of not being able to do anything at all. So Allah is telling us, look again and again, so that you cannot look anymore. Search again and again, so you cannot search anymore. Exhaust your vision in searching for flaws in His creation, in searching for imperfections in His creation. You will be defeated. You will not find any kind of imperfection, any kind of inconsistency in what Allah has created. Especially the sky above you. If you think about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created anything in this world without a reason, without a purpose. Everything from the sky to the clouds to the stars to the animals that walk to the ants that crawl, everything has a purpose. And it is man, it is human being whose life is filled with inconsistencies. It is the human being whose life is filled with shortcomings, with faults, with chaos, with problems. Why? Because he has a free will. If there is beauty and perfection and consistency in the rest of the creation, why is it so? Why is it so? Because they are fulfilling their purpose. They are doing what Allah wants them to do. And if there is inconsistency, chaos in the life of the human beings, why is it so? Because they are not fulfilling their purpose. They are not doing what they should be doing. Everything else is doing ahsan amal. Human beings are required to do the same as well. When they don't do ahsan amal, they make their lives difficult and they also affect the rest of the creatures as well. If there is any imbalance anywhere on this planet, why is it so? It's because of what people have done. Isn't it so? It's because of what our hands have earned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this creation perfectly in the most beautiful manner, free from any inconsistencies. And how is that so? Because they are obedient to Allah. If you look at the sun, it does what is expected of it. If you look at the sea, it does what is expected of it. Despite its massive size, and despite all that water in it, it remains in its boundaries. Isn't it so? The sun being so massive, still, it comes up in the morning, it sets at its right time. Isn't it so? It doesn't say, no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to do anything. No, it's doing its job. And this is why there is beauty in the creation of Allah. Our lives can also become beautiful when when we do ahsan amal.
We think Ahsan Amal is going to complicate our lives. No, it's actually going to make our lives much more beautiful. It's going to make our lives much more meaningful, much better. And here in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentions this guy. In Surah Qaf, ayah 6, Allah tells us, أَفَلَمْ يَنظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ Have they not looked at the heaven above them? How we have structured it and adorned it and how it has no rifts? Similarly in Surah Al-Ra'ad, ayah 2, we learn, اللَّهُ الَّذِي رَفَعَ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 32, وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ سَقْفًا مَحْفُوظًا A very secure ceiling. A very secure roof above us. This is what Allah has made. So, this is so, because everything is doing what it's supposed to do. And we can also become better when we do what Allah wants us to do. وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّا السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ And we have certainly beautified the nearest heaven with stars. The nearest sky, the sky of dunya, as sama ad dunya It's understood in two ways, the sama of dunya and also sama that is nearest. Dunya as in world, meaning the sky which is right above the world, that you can see from this earth. And ad dunya from dal, nun, waw, dunu, what does it mean? Lower, closer. So that which is lowest, the lowest sky, or that which is closest to the earth, the one that you can see from the earth, that one, Allah says, we have beautified it with what? Masabih. Masabih is a plural of misbah. And what is a misbah? A lamp. A lamp gives you light when? When there is darkness. Isn't it so? It gives you light when there is darkness. Sabaha is to become bright. And it's especially to have a reddish tinge, meaning the glow is almost of a red color. Morning is also called subh because the morning light, how is it? It has a reddish color to it. Isn't it so? It's not just white light, but rather it has a reddish color to it. So we have adorned the sky of this world with lamps. Stars, lamps over here refers to it, stars, in order to light the night sky. The night sky which is dark, Allah has made that beautiful also by placing lamps in it, by placing stars in it. And these stars at the same time, وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ And we have made them as missiles. For who? For the shayateen. To throw on the shayateen. Rujum is a plural of rajum. And rajum is that which is thrown, to pelt, to stone. So these Lamps, these stars are like missiles for who? Shayateen. Shayateen are who? Those jinn which go up into the heavens in order to eavesdrop, in order to listen to the conversation of the angels. And when they try to go and listen over there, what happens? They're struck by a shooting star. Isn't it so? Which either kills them, burns them, or makes them lose their senses completely. And there are only some who manage to escape. وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ And we have prepared for them a punishment of the blaze where in the hereafter so we see here that on one side Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those who obey Allah those who do ahsan amal those who should be doing ahsan amal and when a person does ahsan amal he is qualified for entering jannah on the other hand who is mentioned those who disobey Allah those who don't do ahsan amal but what kind of actions do they do aswa the most evil the worst actions and when a person performs the worst actions, then what's the result? Punishment in the hereafter for sure. Adab as sa'ir. But even in the dunya there is punishment. How? That وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ These shayateen are punished in this world even. What does this show to us? When a person does ahsan, he is rewarded. And when a person does aswa, he is punished in this world and also in the hereafter. Exactly. Again, Something so beautiful we see here that Allah created the sky but He didn't just create the sky plain hmm, and boring but rather He has made it beautiful. Similarly, how should our actions be? Plain and boring without any spirit, without any enthusiasm. No! Our actions should also be beautiful. They should also be ahsan. We should learn from this. If Allah does what he does so perfectly, so beautifully, with so much ihsan, with so much in'am, 
then we should also learn from it and bring quality and goodness to our actions. If you look at the sky especially that is mentioned over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about its beauty. If you look at the sky during the day, is it beautiful? Extremely beautiful. With its lovely colors, varying colors, right? The clouds that are in it. Then sometimes you see the sky as purple, sometimes orange, sometimes pink, right? Sometimes you can see the rays of the sun, the sunlight actually. You can actually see them pouring through the clouds as if it's a spotlight or something. So this beauty you see during the day. But even during the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the sky beautiful. Similarly, our actions, how should they be? Beautiful only at times when it's easy? No. Even in dark situations, even in difficult situations, our actions can be beautiful if we want them to be beautiful. We should learn from this. Many times, you know, we're just concerned about doing something to get by. Doing something to just put a check mark, to get it over with. But our effort should be what? To make our actions more beautiful. Like for example, one is that a person is praying just to get over the salah. And the other is that he's praying, making his salah ahsan. Making, performing the salah in the best way, in the most beautiful way, in an excellent way. Because that same action could bring you a lot of reward, or that same action could bring you just a little bit. Right? So it's up to you how much you want to gain out of a situation. How much you want to gain from an action that you are performing. And that will be according to how focused you are on the purpose of your life. Now over here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the sky. That زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ dunya. We have beautified the sky. In Surah Al-Safat, Ayah 6 to 7 also Allah says, إِنَّا زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِزِينَةٍ الْكَوَاكِبِ وَحِفْظًا مِّنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ مَارِدٍ That indeed we have adorned the nearest heaven with an adornment of stars and as protection against every rebellious devil. In Surah Al-Hijr, Ayah 16 to 18, in particular about the shayateen it is mentioned, وَلَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا لِلنَّاظِرِينَ وَحَفِظْنَاهَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ رَجِيمٍ إِلَّا مَنْ اسْتَرَقَ السَّمْعَ فَأَتْبَعَهُ شِهَابُ مُبِينٍ Then a burning flame chases that shaytan. وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ And for those people who disbelieve in their Lord, for them is عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ The punishment of hellfire. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And what an evil, what a wretched destination it is. The shayateen, they get struck by a burning flame. Why? Because they cross the limits of Allah. They cross the boundaries that Allah has set for them. And those people who disbelieve, for them is punishment in the hereafter. Because they are also doing what? Crossing the boundaries that Allah has set for them. Those who disbelieve in their Lord, for them is the punishment of hellfire. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ Recitation. The punishment of hellfire, Allah calls it, بِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ What an evil, terrible destination it is. Because it's the worst end. A destination is a final abode of a person from where he's not going anywhere. So for them it's a destination. They're not going anywhere from there. And what is this hellfire? Ida ulku fiha when they are thrown into it, when they're flung into it. Who? Alladina kafaru bi Rabbihim. When they're thrown into hellfire, why will they be thrown into hellfire? Because who would go there willingly? They'll be thrown into hellfire. What will happen? Sami'u laha. They will hear of it. Shahiqan wahiya tafur. They will hear from it a dreadful inhaling while it boils up. They will hear the sound of hellfire. And what is the sound of hellfire? Shahiq. Shahiq is from the root letters Sheen Haqaf. And Shahiq is used for sobbing, sighing, braying, and in particular the braying of a donkey. What is it? The braying of a donkey. Remember that when a donkey makes a sound, it's an inhaling sound, an exhaling sound. So shahiq is used for the inhaling sound that the donkey makes. Which one is it? The inhaling, as he's breathing in. And especially the last part of that, inhaling. This is what shahiq is. 
And shahiq is also to inhale quickly. To inhale quickly. So as they're thrown into the hellfire, they will hear the sound of the hellfire. And what is the sound of the hellfire? As if it's inhaling something. As if it's breathing, absorbing, sucking them in. Just imagine shahiqan, producing a horrid sound. And the sound of a donkey is extremely annoying. It's not a beautiful sound at all. It's not a comfortable sound at all. Shahiqan. Wahiya tafur. While it boils up. Tafur is from the root letters fa wa ra. And faur is to boil. It's used for when a pot is boiling. Or when out of anger someone is boiling. Or fire also when it's raging. So wahiya tafur. As it's boiling up with them. What does it show? It is as though the hellfire is like a live monster. That it has a sound. It's as though it's boiling up. Hellfire is a great punishment in itself. It's the worst abode. It's food, it's drink, worst. But on top of that, the noise of Jahannam, and then the people of Jahannam, their screams, their shouts, what will all of this do? It will increase the intensity of the punishment of hellfire. Because sounds can be extremely disturbing. They can be extremely disturbing. They can make a person go from being happy to being sad. Being perfectly fine to being extremely annoyed. Being disturbed. Sounds can even kill a person. They can even cause heart attacks. Isn't it so? So just imagine the sound of hellfire. How is it shahiqan? As if it's inhaling. Sucking them in. Wahiya tafur. And it's boiling up with them. If you're at any place, any place, and the sound over there, the noise over there is not comfortable. How do you come out of that place? Extremely disturbed. You cannot rest. You cannot be at peace. You cannot enjoy yourself. Noise is something that is very disturbing. And this shows to us the noise that will be in hellfire. And notice the hellfire is what? It's fire. But that is making a sound. Have you ever heard fire? Fire actually makes noise. If there is ever a forest fire, You can actually hear the trees burning. You can hear the fire spreading. You can hear it's causing a lot of devastation. So shahiqan wahiya tafur, as if it's boiling up with them. Takadu tamayyazu min al ghayl, it almost bursts with rage. Tamayyazu, from the root letters mim ya zai, maize, which is to separate. And tamayyuz is when something is bursting, separating. So, تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْلِ As if it's exploding, ripping apart, out of rage, out of anger. Anger against who? Against those who are coming into it. We learn in Surah Al-Furqan, ayah number 12, إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا When the hellfire sees the criminals, sees the criminals from a distant place, they will hear its fury and roaring. Just imagine, A wild animal, if it sees its prey, how it's going to start making noise? About to attack it. تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْضِ And غَيْضِ is such anger, which a person expresses, shows through his words, through his movements. So the hellfire is as though exploding, ripping apart out of anger. Anger against who? Against those who are coming into it. And then كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ Every time a group is thrown into it, سَأَلَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا Its keepers will ask them, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ Did no warner come to you? The fire itself is furious, raging with its flames. The noise of its punishment, of its fire, of its people, the foul matter that is within it. And every time people are coming in, they're being thrown in, its keepers are asking, Nobody told you? No warner came to you? Did no warner tell you about this punishment? Why are you here? How are you here? أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ Khazana is a plural of the word khazin. And khazin is used for keeper, treasurer. So who are the khazana of hellfire? The angels who are appointed over it. As we learned in Surah Al-Tahreem, عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ And who are they? The angel Malik and his companions. 
So the angels will question the people as they enter. Why are you here? How are you here? Did no one ever tell you of this punishment? The response will be, قَالُوا They will say, Bala, of course. Yes, the warners did come to us. قَدْ جَاءَنَا نَدِيرٌ A warner did come to us. Because what does Allah tell us? وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَى فِيهَا نَدِيرٌ In Surah Fatur, Ayah 24, Allah tells us that there has been no nation, no people, except that Allah has sent a warner to it. And we see this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets. But even otherwise, because nadir is used for prophet, but also anyone who gives warning. So we see that when it comes to people, when it comes to different communities of people, even the smaller ones, there are people who warn them that don't do this. You should do this instead. They will say, بَلَا قَدْ جَاءَنَا نَذِيرٌ Yes, warning did come to us. فَكَذَّبَنَا But we denied. وَقُلْنَا And we said, مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah has not revealed anything. We said, no way. We're not believing. Allah has not revealed anything at all. إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ كَبِيرٍ You are not except in a great error. So they considered themselves to be right and they considered those who were right to be wrong. This is who? The people of hellfire. The people of hellfire in this dunya, they think that what they're doing is right. And what do they call those on the truth? Fi ghalalin kabi. That you are in a great error. You are far away from the truth. In antum illa fi ghalalin kabi. Some have said that in antum illa fi ghalalin kabi, this is a statement of the angels. That the angels will say to the people of hellfire, as they're entering into hellfire, in antum illa fi dhalalin kabir. You were in great error. This is why you've ended up over here. If you were not in error, you wouldn't have been here. You were in error. This is why you're here. وقالوا, and they will say, لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُوا If only we had been listening, أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا or reasoning, مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيدِ We would not have been among the companions of the blaze. They will say, they will express their regret. If only we had been listening. Not talking, but listening. Aunarkilu. If only we had been reasoning, not wasting our times, but using our minds, paying attention. Ma kunnafi ashab We would not have been the companions of the blazing hellfire. What does it show? That people will end up in hellfire. Why? Because they did not listen. They did not understand. This is what will take most people to hellfire. Not listening, not understanding. Doesn't mean they were deaf. Doesn't mean they were insane. That they could not understand anything. No. What kind of listening is this? Such listening that makes a person reflect. That makes a person focus. That makes a person understand. And as a result, he also accepts. So this listening is of acceptance. This listening is of Paying attention, reflection, accepting. Because only if a person listens, then he can bring about a change in his actions. Isn't it so? Listening is the first step. If you haven't heard, you don't know. If you don't know, you won't do it. أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا Then aql is mentioned. And what is that? To comprehend. What kind of comprehension? Just knowing, okay, this is this and this is that? No. Comprehension that changes a person's actions. Getting it. When a person gets it. When a person realizes. And as a result, he changes his ways. So they will express their regret. If only we had listened, if only we had used our mind, we would not have been the companions of the blazing hellfire. And we see that this is a problem with most people. They don't want to listen. They don't want to use their mind. And there are many reasons behind not listening. Sometimes it's just stubbornness. Why should I listen? Why should I accept? And sometimes a person thinks he is more intelligent. Sometimes people are busy talking. Sometimes they're distracted by other things. But listening is in fact the easiest thing to do. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it first. If a person does not listen, he will not understand. If he doesn't understand, he will not change. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 7, we learn, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةً When does this happen? When does Allah put a seal on a person's hearing? When a person does not have any desire. When a person doesn't want to change. When the truth comes before him, but he turns away. When he turns away, then he will not listen. Even what is announced to him. 
In Surah Al-Kahf, Ayah 57, we learn, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُوهُ وَفِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقْرًا وَإِنْ تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَىٰ فَلَنْ يَهْتَدُوا إِذَنْ أَبَدًا In their hearing is a heaviness, so that if you call them to guidance, they will never accept. In Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 155, Allah says, بَلْ طَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Allah has sealed on their hearts because of their disbelief, so they don't believe, except a little. So why is it that Allah deprives a person from listening, deprives a person from understanding, when he is not interested himself, when he doesn't put in the effort himself? And we see that those who don't like to listen, they also tell other people not to listen. Isn't it so? We have learned in the Qur'an, the mushrikeen of Makkah would say, لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ Make noise, don't let other people listen. Don't listen. They would not listen themselves either. And we see this, that for example, if there is a person who is not interested in listening to something, what will they do? They will start talking. When they start talking, they will be deprived, other people will also be deprived. Then, this is why we are told, we learn in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Anfal, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ Don't be like those people who say we have heard, but they don't actually listen. When something is said to you, then pay attention. When something is told to you, then pay attention. And I say that to you as well. Pay attention. Children are coming. If their mothers are not distracted, who are we to get distracted? If their mothers are focused, why aren't we focused? Think about it. We don't pay attention for even a moment. We actually miss out on something. You know that? And if we miss out on something, how do we know? Will we get the opportunity to listen to it again? No. I'm amazed sometimes that during class, people are outside. And what are they doing? Talking, eating. Your class was going on. Announcement was being made. I was in the cafeteria listening to the announcement and people are coming and talking to me. I'm trying to listen and people are coming talking to me. And I'm telling them, go to class. Because if you miss that announcement, will you be able to tell anybody else about it? Will you be able to benefit from it? Perhaps not. You might say, I know already. Okay, you know already. But at this time, what is being said, perhaps was not said earlier. Perhaps will not be said later. So don't miss the opportunity. We lose opportunities like this just because we want to talk, just because we want to be here and there. And this is the attitude of a non-serious person. A person who is serious about his moments, about the purpose of his life, he will pay attention to everything that is said. He will not say, yes, I've heard, or I will listen later. No. He will be very, very careful. وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُوا أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ Listening is the first step. If a person hasn't heard... He will not understand. If he will not understand, his heart will not change. If the heart is not changed, then the action will not change either. فَاعْتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ Then they will acknowledge their sins. But is acknowledgement going to help them? No. Realizing the mistake later, when a person is in trouble, does not help a person. فَسُحْقًا لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ so alienation for companions of the blaze. Suhqan is from the root letter seen haqaf. And suhqan lahu is when the meaning is that away with him. Meaning may this person be distanced. May this person be removed far away. It is said ashaqahu Allahu, Meaning may Allah destroy him. May Allah remove him from every khayr, from every good. So fasuhqan li ashab al-sa'ir. May they be far away from Allah's mercy. Fasuhqan li ashab al-sa'ir. Their confession is not going to help them now. They will be removed far away from the mercy of Allah, abiding in hellfire eternally. Then فَسُحْقَ لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيدِ is also understood in another way. That their confession is سُحْق. Meaning their confession is far. It will be of no use. Whose confession? Of the companions of the blazing hellfire. We see that Fir'aun also accepted his fault. Didn't he? At the time of his death. But was it accepted? It wasn't. It was too late. The time to admit our mistakes is now. Because if we admit now, then we can bring about a change. There is no point in confessing later. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Indeed, those people who fear their Lord unseen, those people, لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً For them there is forgiveness. وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ And a great reward. For who? Those people who fear their Lord in the unseen. 
who are awake, who are alert, who are conscious, even when they are alone. People of hellfire, what will they say? We wish we had heard, we wish we had listened, we wish we had used our minds. What does it show? They were heedless. They didn't pay any attention. They weren't conscious. They weren't careful. And on the other hand, the people of Jannah, for whom is Ajrun Kabir, what is their quality? They fear their Lord in the unseen. Even when they're alone, they are afraid of Allah. They're alert. Which is why even when they're alone, they don't disobey Allah. And if a person is fearful of Allah when he's alone, and as a result he will not do anything wrong, it is more likely that he will fear Allah when he is amongst other people, that he does not disobey Allah when he is in front of other people. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ While being alone, لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ For them is forgiveness and a great reward. In Surah Fatulah 28, Allah tells us, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِ الْعُلَمَاءِ It is those who have knowledge, those who have listened, learned. Because how do you learn? By listening. How do you learn? By using your mind. It is those people who fear Allah. And when a person has this fear, then his actions will change. The Prophet ﷺ said there are seven people whom Allah will shade in his shade on the day when there is no shade except his shade. Amongst them is who? وَرَجْلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهُ A person who remembers Allah in private and his eyes are eyes are filled with tears. So he fears Allah when? When? When he is alone. يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ وَأَسِرُّوا قَوْلَكُمْ and conceal your speech. Awijharubih. Or you publicize it. Innahu alimum bidati sudur. Indeed, he is knowing of that which is within the breasts. You cannot hide anything from Allah. Hide your speech or publicize it. Allah knows. Do something secretly or do something openly. Allah knows. You can hide from people, you cannot hide from him. Asirru qawlakum. What does it mean? That you keep it to yourself, don't share it with anyone. Awajharu. Jahar of qawl is what? That a person says it. Or that a person says it out loud, publicly. So any way you say something, you don't say something, you do something, you don't do something. Innahu alimun bidati sudur. Allah knows of that which is in the chests even. Your secrets even Allah knows. Three things are mentioned here. That which is in the chest, that which is shared as a secret, and that which is publicly announced. Three things are here. You understand? What does Allah say? He knows about everything. You cannot hide any action from Allah. Because Allah even knows the waswasa that you do to yourself. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ The Prophet ﷺ when he had that conversation with that woman, when that woman was talking to him, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ خَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهُ Allah heard that conversation. It was a private conversation. Allah heard that. The Prophet ﷺ shared a secret with his wife. Allah heard that. وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَى بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِ حَدِيثًا Did Allah not know about it? Yes, He did. Because for him, everything is the same. Whether a person keeps it in his heart, or he shares it as a secret, or he announces it. Nothing at all can be hidden from him. In Surah Taha, Ayah 7, Allah says, وَإِن تَجْهَرْ بِالْقَوْلِ فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى If you speak aloud, then indeed he knows the secret. And what is even more hidden? More hidden than the secret. Allah knows about that even. You cannot hide anything from him. Allah questions us, أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ Does he who created not know? He is the one who created you. If anyone would know you, who would it be? It would be him. Ala is understood as a and la. Does not, should not. And what's the jawab? Of course, the one who created, he knows. And secondly, ala is also understood as harf tambi. Ala, ya'lamu man khalaqa. He knows the one who created. The one who created, he knows you. He knows what you keep as secret. وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ And he is the subtle, the acquainted. Who is Latif? The one who knows the fine details even. You cannot hide from him. And he is Khabir. Who is Khabir? The one who knows the reality of things. You cannot hide anything from him. The most delicate, the most intricate of things, Allah knows about it. Your actions even, Allah knows about them. 
The intention with which you do something, Allah knows about it. The effort you put in in doing something, Allah knows about it. So if your action is ahsan, Allah knows very well. And if your action is not ahsan and you can do it ahsan, Allah knows that as well. Recitation. So when Allah knows about us inside out, what does it mean? That we must strive to become good in His sight. When Allah has created so much beauty for us, for us to see, for us to enjoy, then should we not please Allah with our actions? With our intentions, with our words, with our behavior. If Allah has been so gracious to us, He is the Malik, He is the one who has mulk. He has been so kind to us, then it's our duty that we also please Him with the actions that we do. Because He is testing us, observing us, watching us. Every action we do, everything we say, He is checking us. And we cannot hide anything from Him. We can perhaps deceive others, but we cannot deceive Allah. Because He also knows bidat al-sudur, the intention behind the action. Let's listen to the recitation of these verses from the beginning. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر من ترى من فطور ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير ولقد زينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين وأعتدنا لهم عذاب السعير وللذين كفروا بربهم عذاب جهنم وبأس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شهيقا إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شهيقا وهي تفور تكاد تميز من الغيظ تكاد تميز من الغيظ كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جاء فكذبنا فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ظلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فسحقا لأصحاب السعير إن الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير وأسروا قولكم أو اجهروا به إنه عليم بذات الصدور ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير